week three of Donald Trump's 2016 election interference trial. It kicks off in about 48 hours. Michael Cohen's former Cohen's former banker, Gary, is expected to be back on the stand on Tuesday. And the rest of the witness list, it has actually been kept under wraps. Prosecutors fear Trump's attacks might have a chilling effect on testimony. So on that note, another hearing on Donald Trump's potential new gag order violations that is going to take place this coming Thursday. Joining us now to break it all down is MSNBC legal analyst Mary McCord. She's a former principal deputy assistant attorney general for the National Security Division. She is co-host of the Webby Award winning yes. podcast here at MSNBC prosecuting Donald Trump. Greetings, Mary. Hello. Good morning. Well, well, well. OK, so let's just back up for a second, because uh, let's assume uh, everyone was not following it, how how we were, yes. didn't leave, you know, mm -hmm. on, on Friday afternoon, left on the cliffhanger. What What is happening this, where do we leave off and then where are we going? All right, so I think the prosecution made a good decision to start with David Pecker, mm -hmm. right? Because he was able to really give a narrative of how this entire catch and kill scheme originally uh, was originated back in 2015, how it was executed, both through the payoffs of the doorman, the payoffs of Karen McDougal, and ultimately his refusal on behalf of AMI to actually pay off Stormy Daniels and saying, you got to do this, Michael Cohen. I'm not going to basically go into debt anymore for stories I can't even run, because it was not in his economic interest, of course, to pay off and, and, and kill stories. He did that purely as part of this deal he had with Donald Trump and, and Mr. Cohen. So I think that, you know, for the jury, because remember, you're, you, you want the jury to understand everything, and then you can get into the further details. So this is going to ultimately culminate in explaining how the fraudulent records covered up that whole scheme and covered up his attempt to avoid uh, campaign violations. That's, that is Mr. Trump's attempt. And remember, one key point there is David Pecker acknowledged that he was aware of the fact that when you catch and kill stories for a candidate like Mr. Schwarzenegger back in um, California, that can be a campaign finance violation because you're providing something of value without reporting it. So I think that he set the stage really, really well. Um, on cross-examination, there were attempts to make him seem like he maybe had a faulty memory and also to seem like, oh, this is business and usual. As usual, everything is normal. But I think he pushed back on that pretty effectively. I wasn't in the courtroom, but based on the reporting. Um, it seems to be the case. So the Pecker affirmation that he was notionally aware that they might be in a, an area that was violating campaign finance law is critical to the discussion we were just having about <clears throat> an underlying crime that supports uh, felony charges of business fraud. I posited to you that as a Trump defense, perhaps you say to the jury, look, prosecutors, federal nor state, brought the underlying charges against me, so how could you really charge me with this federal crime? Uh, you you push back on that of why that defense really shouldn't work, right? Yeah, I, if I were the prosecutors and it, I would uh, ask the judge for a ruling that the defense cannot argue to the jury that uh, prosecutors chose not to actually bring the charges of election fraud or tax fraud in state court or that the federal government neglected or declined to bring charges uh, for federal campaign uh, finance violations. And I will say the judge on that latter point, the judge actually did already rule on that as one of the pretrial motions was uh, asking him to say, you cannot argue that the federal government, the U.S. attorney's office decided not to prosecute. And the judge agreed with that. And I think the argument is same even when we talk about the state declining to prosecute those underlying charges, because they will say that's not actually relevant to anything that this jury needs to decide. Those are legal decisions that are made by the prosecutor. They have nothing to do with the facts. And moreover, the only proof required to prove felony fraudulent business records is that the business records were falsified in order to cover up or conceal with the intent to conceal right. another crime. You don't have to prove that that other crime was completed or even, frankly, started, but that it was an intent to conceal. So intent is everything. And here. what Pecker's testimony really established was that intent. That's that right. this entire mm -hmm. this operation was intending to protect Donald Trump, the candidate, yep. so he could reach the election. So let's yep. look forward to the, the, this coming week. You know, you're going to have Gary Farrow. Um, he already testified that when Michael Cohen prepared to open an LLC named Resolution Consultants, he completed paperwork that marked no to a question asking if the entity is associated with political fundraising, political action committee, of course, known as a PAC. If Cohen had answered yes, Farrow said, that would have triggered additional review of the account. It, 
put that in like non-legal context for me and then what more you think we'll hear from him this coming week? Well, as a banker, of course, you know, there's a reason they have those forms because their lawyers tell them you better have these forms because they want to make sure that the bank is never complicit in any kind of criminal violation or even anything that just violates civil regulations and particularly when it comes to things like campaign finance violations. So, you know, obviously we'll come back to this when Michael Cohen testifies and he will, I'm sure, explain why he answered no to that question when he opened up this account in order to use it to, to make these payments to Stormy Daniels. Um, so for Mr. Faro, I think he will probably just, you know, it's, it, he's, he's just sort of a business records type of witness. Now, it's possible that there were some discussions that they had about the real purpose. It doesn't sound like that's the case. It, um, uh, so I think he will, I, I don't expect him to be a particularly lengthy witness on Tuesday, unless there are things that I'm just not aware of that he's going to, to testify about. Um, and then we'll move on to cross-examination. It has an interesting corollary with the question that you were asking, Mark about AMI and the fact that in as much as we are looking at this as it relates to Donald Trump and Donald Trump protecting for Donald, Donald Trump, there were also other institutions that needed to protect themselves from Donald yeah. Trump's lies. That's right. That's right. And, you know, when you do business with Donald Trump, I mean, even putting ourselves back at that time, I mean, he's well known to not always pay his bills and yeah. to, you know, um, uh, do whatever is in his interest. And so my suspicion is that, and I think that's why so many, so few banks actually made loans to him, right? <laughs> um, so my suspicion, suspicion is that, you know, bankers and others with legitimate businesses, they, they need to be careful. And their lawyers are probably saying you need to be really careful here. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Donald Trump continues to post on his social yep. media site. He and, and and about the judge, about the case. He is he is telling he, he his site is called Truth Social. His posts are called Truths. He's telling non truths yeah, on, on on truths. Um, he is attacked witnesses. He's in violation of the gag order, plain and simple. Okay, for regular people, he's in violation. I know for the legal folks, you gotta. You got to bring us a stack like this in front of the judge and go to the hearing and say, Judge, exhibit A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. He did it. We are asking for a fine. Mary, what, what the what? I mean, what the what? On judge. Thursday, yeah. this is happening. On Thursday, they're going to hear this, this, this gag organ hearing more. another one more. Lord Jarrett was here yesterday. She made she the argument that she, her theory is that some of this has to do with Mershon's awareness that this could get kicked to an appellate court and that everything needs to be locked tight if that is to be the scenario. And that is why he is being meticulous and some would argue overly cautious with the gag order. I mean, certainly that's a consideration because remember, the way this is being prosecuted is contempt of court. And so mm -hmm. it's, it has the same burden as a regular criminal prosecution beyond a reasonable doubt, right? And so this is why in the hearing last week, he kept asking Todd Blanche, representing Donald Trump, because Dodd Blanche was saying all that Mr. Trump was doing is responding to political attacks. And he'd say, what political attacks? Name one. And, and Blanche name couldn't them. do it, right? So he's building this record, right? Judge Mishan is building this record. I, you know, I thought he built that record on mm -hmm. Tuesday, so I'm not really sure why he hasn't ruled yet on that, except potentially that when the prosecution came in, I guess it was Thursday morning with additional violations, maybe he thought, well, I'll you know, have that hearing before I issue a ruling, building up even more of a record. Um, but I do think it's troublesome to wait this long because there's a shot across the bow. Mr. Trump certainly knows that the prosecutors won't hesitate to seek, a, you know, more sure. uh, findings of contempt. The judge takes it seriously. He holds a hearing. He ultimately w will rule. So I think one would think in a normal world that that would cause Mr. Trump to temper what he says or change what he says. But I do think it's important that, that the judge make a ruling here. It feels like this isn't meeting the moment. The, I just have to say. Right. The thousand dollar fines won't matter. No. Right. You can find no. so so then the question is what next? And I've kind of wondered if the judge says, I don't know if New York is at eighteen hours, twenty four hours, uh, pretrial detention suspended. 
But if you do it again, it triggers it. What what comes after the thousand dollar fines? Because it's not going to stop yeah. Trump. Right? And and I think that's that also may be something Marshawn is thinking is that once I hit the fines, the next step is going to be you know detention. And and really, we're not even talking about pretrial detention in the sense that I'm revoking your conditions of release because sure. this wasn't right, right. brought as a condition of release. This would be like this is actually a penalty contempt. for your contempt. Right. And um, and I think the judge will be very. I think the prosecutors will be hesitant to ask for it. That's why they haven't asked for it yet. I mean, it's a big, big deal. And I think in many ways, Donald Trump wants them yeah. to do that because he wants to fundraise on it and say he's the victim, right? And it's a weaponized uh, justice system, et cetera, et cetera. And his political appointee is, is asking for him to be to be put in jail. And, but I also think it's also logistically extremely difficult, right? I mean, we have a man under Secret Service protection. It's a big disruption to the, you know, the system in New York City. I mean, I suppose he could be kept at the courthouse. But it's a lot of things that I think a lot of people don't really want to happen. Um, yet once you've had fines, that's the next that's thing. Nice. So I think your <clears throat> proposal, and I've heard uh, Neil Cottell and others say this, what mm. about saying, I'm imposing it, but I'm suspending it, and you know you can essentially uh, rehabilitate yourself, <laughs> and then I will reconsider whether, you know, I... Donald I, Trump rehabilitated himself. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's quite a sentence. <laughs> I, I, I think it can be done. He is, he is, we are literally... He, the system is literally allowing, if I could channel my inner yeah. Michael Steele, yeah. they're allowing him to get away with it again. The system, we are all being played. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is playing us, mm -hmm. being played. Mary, you're not being played, though. <laughs>